heck, and um, you might wonder why the heck I'm wearing a Pioneer hat, because usually just decked out and install agronomy stuff from head to toe, basically. Um, and today we're going to talk about Chrome, and Chrome is a new tray technology from Pioneer or Corteva, and what it really is, is basically a new method of insertion, and, and not necessarily a new insertion method, but more of a, a, a new uh, way that we're going to insert the traits within our current insertion method. So typically when we've had agrobacteria media transfer or mediated transformation. So we use agrobacterium, which is a virus that infects trees and causes crown galls. Um, we take the DNA that it inserts into the tree out and put in the traits that we want to insert into the corn plants. So that's the, the way we normally do it is we do individual traits per basically for every insertion. So right now we're inserting the rootworm traits separately than the corn board traits. And um, that's been the way that we've done it for a long time, actually since I was in college, basically for the last 10, 11 years, that's been the way that traits have been inserted into the corn plants is we basically insert rootworm traits and then the corn board traits. Well, with Chrome, the, the novel way that they're doing it now um, is they're gonna insert all these traits at once. So what we've been seeing and what we've seen in the past has been that when we insert the rootworm trait, sometimes uh, corn plants don't respond very well to it. So sometimes we'll end up with um, an acre max or in uh, different genetics, uh, VT double pro, basically a, a corn plant that only has the above ground traits and no rootworm traits. And when we see that come out in a lineup, typically means that the conversion didn't work as well when we started to try to insert those rootworm traits. So we'll end up with a trait or a hybrid that only has one trait package to it. So that doesn't necessarily mean that it ended up being horribly worse. Um, in the grand scheme of things, it could mean three or four bushels of corn. Uh, it could be a percent or two off on moisture. But when we start seeing a major difference between a um, basically a full traded version and a partially traded version, they won't fully bring out to the market the fully traded version. So the thing is with Chrome, when we insert all those traits at once, we're not seeing the yield drag and potentially the moisture drag we've been seeing with some of these hybrids. So it doesn't mean that all the hybrids have had a problem. I mean, obviously there's some Anchor Max Extremes and fully traded other products from different manufacturers that have taken that conversion just fine, but maybe 30 to 40% of the current hybrid lineup can't take that conversion. So we've just kind of shelved those hybrids and we haven't come out with varieties that, that wouldn't take that trait conversion. So now with the Chrome, it allows us to go back in and say, take like a hybrid like 0306 for Pioneer and go out and produce a Chrome version of it so right now in Wisconsin, we only have the Acre Max version. Maybe in the future, um, potentially next year, we'll have another version that'll be a Chrome version that will take that trait conversion and we'll have a fully stacked hybrid there. So it, it's not a different way of, um, a different media transformation or a different way of getting those traits into the plants. It's more of a, a new way of taking the traits we currently have and insert into corn plants and instead of separately inserting them, we basically just insert them all at once. So it's not a new trait. Um, it's not uh, anything that we're doing right now differently. It's really just the only thing that's different is that we're inserting all those traits at once. So we can go back and say we had an inbred female that, that did not ever take that conversion very well. And we just kind of put it off and we couldn't use it well now we can actually go back into those lineups and and pull out some inbreds that we typically wouldn't use and potentially make new crosses and new hybrids with things that were actually show some potential uh, when we're doing trials without the traits and now that we can actually insert those traits we'll actually be able to commercially bring them out so it's a good thing uh, it really means that it's going to open up some of these books of inbred lines and and genetics that we haven't been using just because they wouldn't take the traits that will actually allow us to have some more hybrids so that's a really good thing um i'd be really happy right now we have china approval and verbal confirmation uh, we have yet to hear anything formally out of any of the companies that are involved in it so I mean, I could take a little bit. They just want to make sure they have all the documentation in hand before they do that. So those are kind of where we're at. 
Um, the other thing is Enlist E3 also got China approval verbally. Um, Enlist E3 means um, basically right now we had, there are some in the markets. Um, they're only in direct pipelines going to specific manufacturers or end users that, um, that are only going to keep them in the United States. They're approved for U.S. only. They're not approved from China. So what Enlist E3 beans are, you know, a lot of people have heard about Enlist beans. So the first Enlist was Roundup Ready and 2,4-D tolerant, and it's only labeled for 2,4-D choline, uh, which would be the Enlist and Enlist duos of the world. So right now we have E3 beans that are going to be coming out, and E3 is Roundup Ready, uh, Liberty Link, and 2,4-D tolerance. So you'll be able to use Liberty uh, along with Roundup and 2,4-D on these soybeans. So it, it's still going to be a couple of years, a year before we start seeing a major seed supply from some of these. But it, it's exciting. You know, we, we've we been using Dicamba and Extend for the last couple of years. Um, 2,4-D choline supposedly is uh, less volatile even than some of the newer Dicamba versions. The other cool thing for the Midwest um, is that 2,4-D has... A greater tolerance in soybean plants and, and what I mean by that is if it's a non-traded bean next to our extend bean or enlist beans enlist is 80 times more tolerant to those soybeans so if we had a, a drift or a volatilization event where we actually moved off target um, potentially you know I mean that even if you follow the label some things can happen um, so if we had an off-target movement from Enlist, the odds of those soybeans actually being damaged is 80 times less than dicamba. So that's the exciting part of it. Uh, we'll be able to use Liberty along with those. So you can run uh, Liberty uh, and Enlist along with a bunch of different herbicides. Um, it, it's it's kind of new. We're going to have to feel this out. Um, it's going to be a somewhat similar to the extent thing. We have to see what gets labeled with it. Um, I'm sure there'll be some training events along with that, but I've seen some of this technology in the field in the last couple of years at some Dow field days, and it, it's actually really exciting. Um, when you compare it next to Extend, it, it looks way better uh, as far as staying on target. Um, susceptible crops are a lot easier to deal with. It, it's just a lot easier product to work with. So, um, And then the use rates of what we'll be able to use with 240 are, are are quite different uh, than extend um, just imagine even on the enlist corn which should be coming out as well at some point uh, we'll be able to use to up to a quart of 240 in crop so that's, that's a pretty good chunk of 240 there's a lot of guys who go out with a pint uh, in a burn down situation or even in fall and i will be able to go up to a quart in season so that, that's pretty cool in a single application, uh, what that'll be able to do for us. So it, it's something to really pay attention to. Um, we'll be able to see some of this stuff coming out. Um, and I'll, I'll give you more and more updates as we kind of get through, but I wanted to get you an idea of what actually Chrome is and, and what this Enlist thing means to means to growers and, and to our immediate area. So stay tuned. We'll get some more stuff out as soon as we hear more information on it.